Hey there guys, Farman Official here and welcome to this Age of Empires 4 video. So today we're going to do a build order for the Chinese Archer Rush opening. And with the Chinese we're going to use the Imperial Official to supervise the archery range so that it produces three times as fast. Now the first thing with the Chinese is that we queue up an Imperial Official, not a villager. We start off with an Imperial Official from the town center. We take our villagers to build a mill at the berries and we start taking the sheep. The Imperial Official when he comes out will supervise the mill and then the first two villagers from the town centre will go to wood. So I feel like this strategy is really good opening for the Chinese if you want to be aggressive, and because of the Imperial official supervising the archery range, you're going to have really, really good numbers of archers very, very fast in Feudal Age. We take our scout, of course, to find as many sheep as possible, and we'll bring them back to the mill. What we'll do is, well, periodically, once we've got at least 20 gold in the mill, we'll take the Imperial official to actually pick up the gold from the mill and deposit it in the town center. Bear in mind though, before you do do the pickup for the gold, make sure you drop off the food from the sheep gatherers because you don't want to drop off the food when your Imperial official is not there. The target for this build order is to have constant production from one archery range which is supervised by the Imperial official by under five minutes. And with the supervision of the Imperial official, this one archery range pretty much acts as if it's three. So guys, just to let you know, the PDF build order for this is available, so do check out the YouTube description of this video to see how you might be able to get it if you're interested. Now once we've got the two villagers come out to the wood, we're going to send two villagers to sheep. And then once we've got a total of eight villagers on food, we're going to send the next three villagers to gold. So I find this strategy works quite well if you're up against a Chinese mirror match, for instance, and if it's a particularly open map, it could be pretty good against the Abbasid Dynasty and the Delhi Sultanate. And you could probably pull this off against the English as well. If you're up against the Rus, French or Mongols, you've got to be a little bit extra careful. You may need to think about adding spearmen before you go for this archer rush. I will be working on other build order openings, so probably a spearman opening for the Chinese against those civilizations could be more useful. As you'll see now, we're going to take the Imperial Official to drop off another batch of gold from the mill. And we'll go back to the supervising the mill again. And we keep our scout active, we want to bring as many sheep back to the mill as possible. Okay, now that we've got three villagers to gold, we're going to send the next four villagers to wood. That will give us a total of six villagers on wood. And then that will give us usually enough wood to build the archery range and go for the arch range production once we hit feudal age. So we're going to do one last pickup of gold using the imperial official and we're going to take the three villagers from gold to build the barbican of the sun once we hit 200 gold. That imperial official that you now have once they've done that last drop off of gold will go to supervise the lumber camp. Just a heads up with regards to the builder villagers we will take one builder villager to build a house and then once we've aged up, we will take the Builder Villagers to build an archery range and then eventually go to wood. A nice batch of sheep there arriving at the mill, which is perfect. And so really the target here is to get up to six villagers on wood. And once we have done that, we're going to then train two more Imperial Officials. The first Imperial Official will come out to supervise the berries, the mill, and then the Imperial Official after that will actually supervise the archery range. And of course by then you would have got up to the Feudal Age and you'll start with your archery range production. Okay, so we're up to the Feudal Age and now we are building the archery range and those villages will go to wood, the builder villages that is. And we are getting our Imperial Official because we reached six on wood. And here we are. The Imperial Official now is going to supervise the mill and we've got another Imperial Official queued up who will go to supervise the archery range. Once the archery range is built, of course, we're going to queue up archers essentially immediately and then we'll be able to go forward with those and just look at what your opponent is doing. You want to really kind of look at their sort of weak resources or unprotected resources. For example, their gold there is pretty exposed. So we're up against the French in this game, so really we want to kind of go for that gold to try and stop them producing any knights. Already before five minutes now, we've just hit the five minute mark 
and we've got constant production of the archery range, which is effectively acting as three archery ranges right now, with the supervision of the Imperial official. Alright, now, once that second Imperial official was out, by the way, you're going to send the next five villagers to wood. That will give us a total of 14 villagers on wood. And yeah, we're going to keep scouting our opponent's base. You want to kind of see what you can hit and target first. Now, we will talk about adaptations at the end of this build order tutorial, but this is the point where you might even consider sending a couple of villagers to stone, meaning that you will idle the archer range a little bit. But sending the villagers to stone will mean that you can actually send two extra villagers perhaps to drop some outposts near your opponent's resources and then even upgrade them with outpost technologies. And that's really useful about denying certain key resources. So that will make it into a sort of effectively an archer tower rush. But that's a separate discussion and we're just going to stick out for the archer rush uh, at this moment. As you can see we're going to keep things running, ticking along. We're going to be a little bit idle in the archer range but that's expected you know, to be able to drop Effectively, um, you know, three archer range worth of production is pretty impressive at this stage. And we've got plenty of archers now. An opponent doesn't really have anything. So we're really going to be able to push forward. Now we're reaching almost the 14 villagers on wood mark. And once we get there, we're going to send the next four villagers to food to make 12 in total. We are periodically also building houses using at least one villager from the wood. And we're just going to micromanage our sheep there. And we've got a decent number of archers. Now, in this build order tutorial, we are up against the French, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend going a straight archer rush against the French. Perhaps a spearman opening would be a lot better for the playing as a Chinese versus the French. I will actually be working on that build order very soon, so if you're interested in that, do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and then of course you get a notification once that's released. But in any case, to be honest, you're actually going to have a, effectively a triple archery range production before five minutes. So, I mean, even if you're up against knights, you can actually take pretty decent trades or even really kind of push, because as you can see, we've pushed them off gold. You need a lot of gold to produce knights. And, you know, one knight like that can't really take an effective fight. So um, as long as you're denying them off gold, you know, you can really even take fights against knights. If they go for horsemen, which is a possibility for them, um, although they have had a recent buff with the increased pierce armor, the overall health of the horsemen has been reduced since the last patch. Uh, so I don't even think they're really that effective against archers. They really have to mass up. Um, you've effectively got three arch range production. You know, they're going to at max have one stable production of horsemen. So, you know, they're really not going to manage with that. And as you see, we've got a decent number of archers now coming in. And we're certainly going to be able to apply some pressure. So once you do have the four villagers go to food to make 12 in total, we're then going to send the rest of the villagers to wood. And we're just going to refresh the lumber camp. And don't forget, once you do that, you'll actually need to use the Imperial official to actually supervise the new lumber camp. And just make sure you do that if it's easy to forget and you don't want to forget that because otherwise you really lose that bonus. And we're getting a really, really big mass of archers now. Now we've hit 16 villagers on wood. We're just going to micro this fight and, you know, as you can see, we can even take knights uh, with these archers. But now that we hit 16 on wood, we're going to think about dropping a blacksmith for some upgrades. It's actually pretty important because this is the time where you either want to get um, upgrades for your army to make them stronger in this particular case, you want to go for Steeled Arrow, of course. But you may also think about going for Siege Engineering, depending on the situation. As you can see here, we're in very good control. And so I think going for Siege Engineering for Rams would be a decent shout at this stage. But, you know, you can't really go wrong with going for Steeled Arrow, just in case you're worried about your opponent massing up, for instance, a lot of Man at Arms or Horsemen. Um, but keep your army active. You want to see what damage you can do. And I can see now they've built a mill there, so oh, lots of juicy villager picks here with my archers. And this is going to be really bad for our opponent. And there's not much our opponent can do, because of course they can't engage. They don't have the military production most likely at this stage. Um, and we can put a heck of a lot of pressure on. They do have a tower on that gold, which is not ideal. But, you know, you can't win everything. But as you can see, we're getting siege engineering from the blacksmith as an upgrade. And we'll actually then start to be able to build rams. As you can see, we've got plenty of wood for rams. And we will discuss an alternative 
to building the blacksmith in the next section of the video. So do stick around for that because it is, of course, very important to remain adaptable to your situation. Now, with this number of archers, even if they have a tower, you can still harass that gold line. You know, even if it's just to idle the villagers that's there, and if they're not paying attention, which is actually a really good situation for you, if they're not paying attention, you can pick off the villagers. Okay, so now let's talk about adaptations. Now, the main point of adaptation of this particular build order is at the point where you have 16 villagers onward. At this point, you can actually look to do several different things, but I'm going to run you through about four of them. Option number one, you can do exactly what we've done in this tutorial, which is to go for an extended feudal age by getting a blacksmith and prioritizing siege engineering, as well as other upgrades to start a ram rush. Don't forget to get a few villagers on gold or an imperial official tax collector to fund your upgrades from a gold point of view. You can also consider pushing with some outposts and a few villagers on stone would enable you to research upgrades for your outposts. Option number two, if you find that your opponent is actually starting to mass up a decent number of cavalry, you'll want to build a barracks to start producing spearmen. You can even consider moving the Imperial official supervising the archery range to start supervising the barracks. Bear in mind though your eco balance, as you'll want to start moving more villagers to food. After getting some spearmen, you may opt for getting a blacksmith for siege engineering, as well as other upgrades to start a ram rush. Now options number three and four will be a bit more macro based and a bit more eco and defensive. With option number three, if you feel like you're probably not going to get that much more damage done, you can consider bringing your archers home and start to wall off your base, thinking about getting to Castle Age. To do this, you'll want to move your Imperial official who is supervising the archer range to go supervise the gold mine. You'll take some villagers from wood to gold, and you can look to get new villagers from the town center to go to a food resource or start transitioning to farms, especially if you're running out of sheep, berries, or deer. Option number four, which is very similar to option number three, you can wall up, bring your archers home, and go for the Song Dynasty by building the Imperial Academy. This will give you a lot of bonuses, in particular making your villagers produce a lot faster. After this, you can go for Castle Age, and in any case, with both options number three and four, bear in mind your strategy for when you get to Castle Age. You want to think about countering your opponent's units. If they're getting up to Castle Age two, just beware that your opponent might be going for a siege workshop, in which case, consider mangonels. That's something you'll definitely need to be ready for and be careful about seeing as you have a very archer heavy army at this point. Don't forget as well, civilizations like the Abbasid dynasty can actually build mangonels using infantry and not even needing siege workshops. Going up to the castle age with the astronomical clock tower could really help with this by giving you access to springles, which are essentially anti-siege units. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this build order tutorial, and if you did, do give the video a thumbs up as it really helps the channel, and I will be developing the PDF build orders I have for all my build orders, and if you'd like to have access to that, do check out the YouTube video description. But in any case, you know, actually looking through the videos and analysing what I'm doing when is actually a good approach and writing notes as well is pretty decent. So if you'd like to see more Age of Empires 4 content like this, do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can keep up to date with Age of Empires 4 content. And if you'd like to see the full playlist of the build orders that I have on the channel, click the right end card screen now. But otherwise guys, I hope you have a great day.